12 seasons, 260 episodes. Mark Burnett, Mark Cuban, Mr. Wonderful, ABC, CNBC, Shark Tank, and American Television Legacy. I've had numerous requests to do an episode on Shark Tank. Thank you all for your ideas and encouragement. One question I always get asked is, what are these sharks looking for? You represent everything great about entrepreneurship, the American dream, you are freedom. What attracts them to a company? Love this. I don't think that I have ever seen a product come into the Shark Tank that resonated to me more deeply in a social mission way as this. Or what kind of products or services do they want to invest in? Two sharks are out. Peter has two offers on the table for his environmentally safe ski wax company, Mountain Flow Eco Wax. What is their bait? I'm going to offer you 125000 but for 20%. Oh, <laughs> mamma mia! Let's see how to bait a shark. Hi, I'm Parat Kenodia. I have valued over 2,000 businesses worth $2.6 trillion. I educate founders and investors on the art and science of valuation. After analyzing data for over 800 deals, I have created a checklist that sharks and venture investors follow prior to making investments. One, the founder. Money is always given to the individual. Not the idea, not the company, not the team. Always one person. To be worthy, investors look for the following traits. Is she likable? Likable can mean many things. But in this context, they are seeking individuals who are relatable or well-liked by customers, colleagues, and even future investors. Is this person reliable? Shows where your heart's at and where your head's at, right? You're an inventor, you're a dreamer, literally. Right. Has this person consistently performed? Impressed by you, now we're having a tough love discussion. Mm -hmm. It's about money, I wanna make money. At school, with family and friends, in keeping fit, with prior ventures, success is a habit. If someone has a history of delivering, then chances are they can deliver what they are promising now. Two, market demand. What pre-existing demand or problem is the product or service solving? He also found his perfect match in QVC queen, Lori Greiner. She instantly saw the potential for her network and made a deal to fund the venture to the tune of $200,000 in exchange for a 20% stake. How great is this demand? Where are you guys at now? So in terms of sales, when we initially spoke with you, we were at 87,000. Right. Now we're at just about half a million and we're projected Good. to make a million dollars if everything falls into place. If the product or service is solving a pre-existing demand, the founder can ride with the tide and the investors would love to come along for the ride. If the problem does not exist, or if they have to create the market, they are looking at an uphill battle. Three, business model. How does the money flow into the company? Is the revenue recurring? Ideally, you wanna set up a recurring revenue business model, which can scale as the customer dependency and usage grows. What is the per unit gross margin? For a company to scale the per unit pricing. The assembly process in our first year, was a nightmare. assembly was more expensive than cost of goods. Has to make sense. No point investing in marginal gross profits as increasing margins takes time and can break a company. Sharks don't want to be running a little $500,000 business. It's not worth their time. They're in this for a big payday. Does the company have potential to become the next Uber? Think the flywheel effect. 
adding more riders in Uber attracts more drivers, which attracts more riders, which allows them to scale their infrastructure, which attracts more riders again, and so on. Can the sharks help this company become the next Uber or Amazon? Four, traction. Where is the company now? Do they have revenue and customers? Investors are most reluctant to invest in a pre-revenue company. They want to invest in businesses with a proven proof of concept. How does their demand for capital stack up against their current revenue? Investors want to hedge their bets. What better way to hedge bets than to invest in a company where their money can be covered with existing revenue? You should tell me the numbers. So we've been in business for 11 months, and since September, we've done $68,000 in sales. Nice. But the <laughs> 40,000 of those have been in the last six weeks. Wow. Oh, and nice. why is that? What happened? For example, are they asking for 500,000 in capital raise and have 100,000 in revenue, or do they have 500,000 in revenue and asking only for 250,000 in raise? Valuation and exit. Sharks and venture investors are not looking to buy a business and run it in perpetuity. That is not their business model. Instead, think of them like universities. They want students to join as freshmen and leave after four years of paying their dues. They are great at growing businesses. So when it comes to valuations, only give them enough equity to keep them interested. $400,000 for 37%, yes or no? Because the sharks almost have unlimited capital, they can invest any amount, only if they can foresee a 100% return. Think of them like the blackjack players in Las Vegas. They are just looking for the hand that doubles their money. If an investment checks three out of five factors, it is debatable. Four out of five, not bad. 515, oh, I gotta have it. Sharks know when a rocket ship is about to launch. If they think the investment is like SpaceX, they want in at any valuation. As Sheryl Sandberg once said, if you're offered a seat on a rocket ship, don't ask what seat, just get on. Is your business a rocket ship about to take off? If so, buckle up. Thanks for watching.